This Saturday, for the fifth year in a row, Jamaica Plain will open its yards in porches for a motley musical homecoming. The free event will showcase a variety of musical styles, from hip-hop and spoken word to rock, neo-soul, Latin folk, Pletzmer, and punk band. To tell us about the lineup and the Porch Fest experience are the event's co-organizers, Mindy Freed and Marie Kidman. Uh, thank you both very much for being with us again. Thank, thank you, you for having us. I want to start with Mindy. This is not just another year, another bunch of musicians. Uh, uh, there's a sort of a statement you put out about the event, about I guess this event as a response to what's happening in the country. Well, you know, I would just say that we've always felt that this event was about building community and particularly uh, across the divides of race and class and culture and immigrant status. But uh, our current political landscape um, is such that we felt that it was important to just be a little bit more transparent about why we're doing this. And there was something about organizing an event that's fun in the context of people um, being arrested, uh, you know, just the, you know, the, just the general kind of uh, backdrop to politically what's going on. So, um, you know, we feel that it's very important, particularly in times like these, to work on building the fabric of our society, of our community, and uh, you know, watching each other's backs, really being cognizant of people who are suffering or struggling in the society, and um, if we're not those people, being allies to those folks. So that's a lot of what we are thinking about in the context of doing something that's a celebration of talent and diversity in our community. Uh, Marie, uh, speaking of talent, in addition to being an organizer, you play in a honk band in Jamaica Plain. Uh, and explain how, how that fits into the mission here about connecting with the community. So I play with a number of different bands, and all of them are street bands. So we like to play right down on the ground, not on a stage separate from our audience. And so again, following on what Mindy was saying, it's all about building community, creating an experience where a lot of people are experiencing something together. So there's not such a separation as there is often in artistic events even, where the, where the audience is watching and not participating in any way. Mindy, what about some of the mix here in the musicians? I guess that's another way of, of uh, creating community in the sense that you're getting in different kinds of community too. Right. I mean, one of the things that's very exciting to us is that now that we're in our fifth year, uh, we have developed some really strong relationships and partners throughout the neighborhood. So, for example, um, JPNDC is one of our strong partners, and we have probably seven or eight JPNDC uh, venues. Um, and one example would be this year um, at the home of Betsaida Gutierrez. And uh, Betsaida is a, a veteran housing activist, uh, Puerto Rican woman who um, is also a poet. And she's part of a group called Never Too Late to Be a Poet, which is part of this workshop taught by Sandy's story. Um, this year, Beth Sida gave us a call and said, um, given what's going on in Puerto Rico, um, could they also read collectively, read a poem by a Puerto Rican poet named uh, Pedro Pietri called um, Puerto Rican Obituary. So, you know, we have people on sort of that end of the spectrum, um, the age spectrum, um, you know, doing poetry and and and. Uh, really being proactive and getting the word out. And we've also this year hired um, Devin uh, Ferreira, who is um, a youth worker and a musician and works with uh, youth groups all over the city. And he's gotten maybe 20 or so different youth performing groups who will be performing in different venues around Porch Fest, around Hyde Square and up the street. And so we're excited about having both ends of the age, age spectrum, spectrum really represented um, and, and lots more. Marie, uh, you said you, you, you have experience as a street musician. Uh, you're looking for this event on Saturday for a street audience going up and down the street. Talk about what that's like for people who are going from one thing to another. So it's different than your typical festival where everything's sort of in one place and you can sit down on your blanket. and Well, you can do that if you choose to. You can choose a spot and sit down. But on Porch Fest Day, people are wandering the streets on bikes, on foot. We encourage people to be on bike or foot. And actually, well, there's a free trolley as well. Cars are discouraged because there's a lot of traffic. And there's a whole different feel to the streets when you don't have that traffic, right? It's true. And it's, you know, ideally, maybe in a, a number of years forward, there will be no cars involved. People have figured out that it really just isn't fun to bring a car. Mm -hmm. But right, it is fun already. It's already, you know, the streets are packed with people. A lot of the smaller streets are literally packed with people and cars just go a different way. Um, 
and people wander from porch to porch. Some people are, you know, plan it out in advance and decide where they want to go. Other people just sort of wander and hear a little music over here and go that way and go from porch to porch. Um, and it's literally all over the four square miles of the neighborhood. This has been on News. We're talking with Mindy Fried and Marie Gitman about J.P. Porch Fest. Uh, Mindy, for people who haven't been to this before, um, what do you think it would be like for them, especially this is a first impression? <laughs> uh, I think generally the first impression people have is that it's overwhelming and amazingly fun, and they're not sure what they should do first. And so, um, you know, there are different strategies that people use. As Marie said, some people really study the map. You know, they, they figure out what kind of music or what kind of art form they really want to take in. Other people um, go to somebody's home that they're familiar with and just continue out from there, kind of spanning into the radius of that part of the neighborhood. Um, you know, we encourage people to figure out maybe two or three things that they know they want to catch and then be open to spontaneity because there's so much more than you could expect. Um, I mean, for example, the Elliott School um, every year kind of grows more and more exciting. This year we have a, the a theater porch, meaning there's a whole probably seven or eight different um, theater troops that will be performing. Um, in one section of the Elliott School, we've got circus arts with um, Commonwealth Circus and Circus Up. So there's tons of really great participatory stuff for kids. And then we have storytelling for people of all ages. And that's just in one venue. Uh, you just literally walk up and down the streets and there's just, you know, so much happening. I mean, I mean, I know it's a treat for the audience uh, to, to hear live music because you can be more receptive to things, but, but what about the musicians? What's it, what's it like for them to be playing to all these different people? We've had musicians, a number of musicians, tell us Porch Fest is their favorite, even though they're not paid anything, Porch Fest is their favorite gig of the year because they have a really in invested audience. They have people who are surprised to hear them, people are wandering by and hear them and are surprised and excited to hear them. So. They, they say that people report to us that the audience is very engaged and, you know, and they make new fans. And a lot of bands have actually kind of launched their careers at Porch Fest because people sign on to their emails and then go see them elsewhere and they, they gain a new fan base that way. Mindy, I, I know uh, Jamaica Plain did not invent the first Porch <laughs> Fest ever, but I guess it's the first one in Boston. It's been running for five years. So why this neighborhood? Well, uh, this neighborhood has a pretty strong kind of infrastructure. Um, people are interested in the arts. Um, it has a reputation for being super diverse, but the reality is that there's, um, th there's a lot of segregated parts of the neighborhood. So there are parts of the neighborhood where there's more poverty, there's other parts that are higher income, um, there's a Latin quarter, which is great, but it, you know, it's segmented from uh, other parts of the community. So we felt that um, in this experience, we're able to bring people together to feel a sense of community as one community and not as separate communities. And there are a lot of issues that we're working on, um, one of which is uh, the problem of gentrification in the neighborhood, which is something that happens in urban areas throughout the country. Um, so one thing we're doing is we have Bikes Not Bombs is doing a bike tour uh, around the neighborhood in conjunction with the Boston Tenants Coalition, which will, will be um, telling people about the history of housing activism and successful efforts to limit some of the, the negative things that are happening around uh, the growth in housing. Right. What, what about uh, engaging the community in a way to support this event? Because you've got to get some money somewhere just, just to have the infrastructure. I mean, businesses or, or where's it coming from? Yeah, we have a great list of business sponsors this year and last year. Um, we just started working on this with a lot, with more energy last year, really getting businesses involved. And businesses have seen what a successful event it is. And it, it it's good for everybody. Yeah, so, I mean, you've got this traffic there. They've they, they got to go and get some water exactly. or a cup of coffee or something, right? They now all really plan for Porch Fest Day. They have to have extra staff because it's really, it's a crowded event and they get a lot more business than a typical Saturday. Mindy, I, I know for people wondering how they're going to find all these different places, it, it, you must have spent a lot of time, or somebody must have spent a lot of time, because <laughs> you've got this chart, it's available online, I, I think you're going to have some printed versions for free, so explain to people, how's it going to work, how they can navigate their way through this? 
So I'll just say that in the past, we have spent um, money printing up 6,000 copies uh, of these beautiful print maps, large print maps. And so you see people walking around with the maps, and it's a great thing. But this year, we didn't have the money, the same kind of money. So we decided between that and the fact that we'd like to cut a few trees less, um, we're encouraging people who are comfortable going digital to do that. And we have a great app that you, know, you can uh, look at the schedule online. Um, we'll also have copies of maps available and on our website there is a printable version so that rather than us printing 6,000 copies people who plan on coming to PorchFest are encouraged to go on our website which is www.jpporchfest.org and look at there's a little link that says printable map and just open that and it's a PDF file that they can print and they will have their very own copy. Yeah, Marie, this is starting, what, 12 to 6 on Saturday? 12 to 6 on Saturday, rain date Sunday. And, and for those who don't know it yet, uh, this is very accessible on, uh, on the T, especially the orange line, right? Yes. Um, there's a lot happening around the Jackson T-Stop, Green Street, and Stony Brook. A little bit less around Forest Hills at, the, at this point. Yeah. Maybe in the future there will be more around there. Thank you both yeah. very much. Marie Gitman and Mindy Freed from Pleasure. Jamaica Plain Porch Fest. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. We'll have more news in just a moment.